Hi guys, Steve here again for another video on learning from home and this is a video about creating some Lego designs using a program called Studio 2 which is a free amazing program that you can run on both a Mac or a Windows based PC and it's an incredibly easy program to use. You can build incredible Lego models. I use this program for the basis of all of my designs before I put them on Lego ideas. Here's a few Lego ideas projects that I've worked on just to show you running in the background now. And I use this program to build them all digitally and then I export them as rendered photos just so you can see what they would look like in real life. And you also have the option to export them as 3D models if you really want to so you can explore them in virtual reality or augmented reality later on. But this program is free, it's fantastic, it's really easy to use. And your activity is to try and create an object or an item or a location or a thing, place, person, whatever you want that might be connected to a particular unit of study. So for example, if you were doing um, a history unit, you could do a scene from World War II. It could be a geography unit where you're talking about France. You might want to build a scene of the Eiffel Tower. It might be a planet from a solar system project. It might be something from a rainforest unit. It could be um, a science project. You could build a brain. You could build heart, lungs. You could build anything that you think would be a fantastic thing to build to put into your project presentation. You could add it to your ebook. You could add it to your keynote, your PowerPoint, whatever it is. Build a model. Once you've finished, upload it and share your ideas with your class. Share your ideas with your teacher, share your ideas with your fellow peers, and even show your parents and how cool it is to build Lego. It's a really great way of building for free without having to go to the shops at the moment to buy lots of Lego. And the end result looks almost identical to the real thing, as you can see from the photos from some of my previous projects. So get into it, build something awesome, let's see what you can come up with, and have a great time in the process. First thing we're going to do is make sure everyone is on the same page. So if you haven't installed the program, you need to go to whatever internet browser you use. Just click on it and then type in Studio 2.0 and it should appear at the very top of your option list here. If I click on that one, it'll take you straight to the install page. And if you're on a Windows machine, it'll just come up with the option for 32, 64-bit. You can install that just by clicking on that. It'll take about five minutes to install, maybe 10 minutes, depending on your internet speed. Install it, and then you're ready to go. So I'm just going to close this, and I'm going to open up Studio 2. Once it's installed, you should see the icon, Studio. And when you click on that, it'll come up with a menu. And you have the option to import other people's projects. You might have older projects, uh, but to start with, it'll come up with this one here create new and we're going to start up with a completely brand new blank project which looks like this and you'll get a grid now it looks like oh you can only fit a few blocks on there but as you put more and more blocks on there that grid will expand and I'm just rotating this at the moment by holding the right click on my mouse and I'm just moving the mouse around the screen and you can see that you can move that around in all different angles okay if you want to zoom in and out you just use the scroll wheel and you can zoom right into it or you can scroll out and zoom out so this is my brand new project there's absolutely no lego pieces yet but it's very easy to add new lego pieces and we're going to just go over here to the left hand side here you can see there's a huge menu and if i scroll down you can see that there's a lot of pieces in here thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces but beautiful thing about Studio 2 is that they're actually categorized. So if I just wanted to search for animals, for example, I could click on animal and I can see there's a list of animals just related to this particular category. So if I wanted to grab this parrot over here and put it into the project, all I need to do is click on any Lego piece and just click and drag it into my main project and drop it in. And you can see that I'm just going to right click and rotate my project around and you can see this lego parrot from all different angles if i wanted to rotate this lego piece around i can actually also use the arrow keys so if i press the left arrow it'll rotate like that if I press the right arrow it'll rotate like this I can press the down arrow and i can press the up arrow as well to flip it around very very easy to add pieces i might want to put something for that parrot to sit on like a little lego plant i might go over here and type in plant and then it shows me a whole bunch of different plants, Lego plants that I can choose from. So I might grab this one here and drag that in there. 
and I can rotate that around a little bit, put that wherever I like. Okay, now if you want to change the color of the piece because it's a little bit boring in white, I can simply click on the piece and over here on the right hand side, you've got your color palette. There's a lot of colors to choose from. So if I click on red, you can see all the colors related to red, which includes browns. Um, but in this particular case, I want a green plant, so I click on green. Dark green, light greens, bright greens, all kinds of different greens. Might make this just standard green. That looks a little bit nicer. And then I want the parrot to sit on the plant. I simply click on the parrot and I just drag and it clicks into place. Okay. Now the parrot, I'm going to change the color of that. I might make that standard red. Okay, so I have a red parrot sitting on a green plant. Very, very simple. Now, that just clicked into place when I dragged it. If yours isn't clicking into place, it's because you haven't turned snap on. There's a little option right up the top here that says snap. And if that's not turned on, I'll just turn mine off now so it's white. Watch what happens when I try to drag the parrot. It just doesn't really snap into place properly. Okay, but if I click on snap to grid and then I just click on it, and it snaps into place. I highly recommend turning that on, especially if you're new to the program. It makes things a lot easier. And uh, and that that's the very, very basics of um, Studio 2 and getting pieces in there. You will get used to um, finding all the different pieces over here on the left. There are lots of different categories. But for the moment, just have a go at adding simple Lego pieces into your project by dragging them from the menu straight into your project and then uh, if you want to you can also copy and paste pieces so if i wanted to duplicate this parrot i can click on it and i can right click and press copy and then i can press paste or i can just do Control c for copy Control v on a mac obviously it's command c command v so if i do that i'm actually using a mac at the moment Control c and Control v and i can keep pressing Control v and have as many parrots as i want okay these parrots are on top of each other so I'll just move them like that there you go I can change the colors of the different parrots very very simple please have a go at creating some Lego pieces and changing their colors okay now we're going to talk about the different categories that you can search for when you're looking for specific Lego pieces. As you can see over here on the left hand side, if I was to just keep scrolling down, it would go for hours and hours and hours of different pieces that I could scroll through. There are literally thousands and thousands of Lego pieces that span across lots of different genres of Lego and lots of different eras, right back even into the 80s. And if you didn't know what a piece was called, it could take you a really, really long time to search for a specific piece. But a lot of it is common sense. For example, if I was looking for a brick and I wanted it just to be like a two by two stud brick, then I might just go over here and instead of searching through this column, I could type in the word brick and I might go two by two. That would cull down the list to just bricks that are affiliated with that description, brick two by two. Now, there's a lot of bricks still that are two by two studs, but I can see that that has at least culled it down. And if I scroll down a little bit, there it is. There's the piece I was looking for, two by two. And to get that into the window again, I just click on it, drag and drop it in. Now, if I wanted the two by two stud that was maybe three high, I might want to be a bit more specific with my description, go two by two by three. And then that will show me this piece here. And it's a lot higher, but you can see that it's actually three of these in a row. So if I copy that, so it's three high, but it's still two by two. Okay, so that's a really cool way of searching for bricks really quickly and really specifically. Now, there are lots of different types of categories you can choose from. Bricks is one very, very popular one. Another one is plate. So if I type in plate and I did two by two, you can see that it's going to show me all the bricks that are two by two. And if I go down a little bit, I can see there is my two by two plate. Okay, now plates and bricks are probably the most popular main categories and if i wanted to add another one there i'd probably call it tile so i'm just going to click on the word plate replace that with the word tile and then it will show me all the tiles that are two by two now you can see that there there's the piece that i was looking for two by two but there's a whole bunch of other tiles as well which still fit into that category and if i click on that one for example and put that there you can see that 
this has a much more specific description. Tile modified, still two by two, but it is a corner piece. And if I typed in the word corner over here as well, I would, it would have been a little bit quicker to find that piece. And you can see that there's three tiles that fit the description two by two and have corner pieces. And this one here is actually a round corner piece. And then that one's your standard corner tile piece. Okay. And of course I can just quickly build with those very easily. Okay. So tiles, plates, and bricks. They're very, very popular. And then of course, there's lots of other categories as well. You can type in wheel, find a bunch of different bricks that are wheels. Okay. You could type in window. You can type in any description. I typed in plant earlier on. Okay. There's lots of plants. So you just need to get used to the different categories and you can actually search through some of the main categories over here on the left hand side, just at the top here. If this is clear, you can see there's a whole bunch of different categories, doors, windows, there's um, friends, pieces, garage, lo lots of different things. And this will save you hours and hours and hours of time. So again, I put this graphic up on the screen which kind of breaks down the categories a little bit easier for you into some of the more popular categories and have a bit of a look at that see if you can memorize some of those keywords and that will definitely help you in your quest to find a specific piece for your Lego project okay now we're going to talk about some of the different color options there's not just normal colors there's also transparent color options in studio 2 which is really really cool so once you've found a particular piece that you're looking for and you wanted to change the color I'm just gonna go to plant here and I'm gonna grab a uh, let's go that's a cool piece okay so if I wanted to change this again I just click on it it's selected then I can go over to the color palette over here and I can change that to whatever color I want. Now there's different categories of colors as well. So purple will show me a whole bunch of different ones, including pinks. Red includes all my browns. A lot of people go, where's the brown? It's actually under red. If I go to orange, I can see a lot of different orange, oranges and yellow. Um, so with the plants, I don't usually just go for the traditional greens, okay? That looks really cool, but I like to sometimes make it, you know, like olive green, which is really nice. And I used a lot of these particular colors in my massive Star Wars Lego set, which was 17 and a half thousand pieces. So I didn't want to just do all the same color, all green. It's really good to have different variations in your Lego designs to give it a little bit of flavor and make it look interesting. It gives the Lego project a little bit of depth as well. I can also make Lego pieces transparent. So if I click on this and I wanted to make it transparent, I can go over to our color palette and I start typing in the word transparent. I just need to type in the first few letters, so trans. You can see trans black, trans green. I've got all these different options if I wanted to make that trans pink. Okay, that's actually a see-through pink color now, which might be cool if you're trying to make a coral plant underwater ocean sort of project. The trans option is really, quite a great option for Studio 2. This is really good if you're trying to make a brick into a, like a window, you want to make it transparent, don't forget about the trans option. So that's the color palette. It's very easy to use. Make sure that you keep in mind, if you're choosing weird colors like this trans pink one, that color is probably not going to exist in real life, which means that if I wanted to build this project as a physical build at the end, be very careful that you don't choose pieces that don't exist. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to order them through BrickLink. But otherwise, if you're just doing it for fun and you want it to look really good and you're going to render some images and you don't care about doing the physical build, go nuts and have a lot of fun. Okay, now we're going to talk about a, another option which I find really helpful when you're building. Uh, I'm just going to type brick here and just do a standard brick. Okay, now if I was in a really big model and it was really complicated, had lots and lots of pieces and I wanted to move something around, of course I could just click on it and I could drag it with the mouse. And if you've got snap to grid on, which I do, and I highly recommend turning on, then it's really easy to move that piece around. But there are some other things that I can do to move things a little bit more specifically around as opposed to just using the mouse. And if I click on it once, it gives me this little spanner icon that appears in the middle there. If I click on that spanner icon, it gives me the option to move by angle, 
so I can spin it around. And have a look at this. I can move it in all different kinds of directions. So I could move it this way. I can move it this way. I can move it this way. So you might have two pieces connected to each other. So let's go and grab another piece here. Okay, I'll turn that around. And then when that locks into place, I go, okay, well that's fine, but I might want this top one here to actually rotate a little bit. So I go, okay, well, I'll click on the little rotate icon and then I spin it. And you can see that it allows me to actually move the pieces very, very specifically. If I didn't have that option and I just used the arrow key, it would just go all over the shop and it would be very hard to control and it just kind of locks into the grid and it doesn't really work that well some of the time. So that is very, very cool. And the other thing that I can do when I click on it is not just click the angle one, I can click this one here, which is up, down, left or right. And if I click on that, I can actually move it specifically up or down, right, left, backwards and forwards. Okay, so sometimes these little options come in really, really handy. You might get into a little bit of a pickle. You've got a really big model with thousands of pieces and you're trying to get into the middle and you select the piece, but you just can't move it around properly and it keeps snapping into grid or keeps going where you don't want it to go. Often this little icon comes in really, really handy and I end up using it quite a lot in my big models in particular. All right, now we're going to build something together. Uh, we might build uh, maybe a portion of the Roman Colosseum. So to do that, obviously all of our projects could look a little bit different, but I'm going to start by maybe looking for some kind of arch. So if you look at the Roman Colosseum, okay, and we go in here and search for some images, we can see, okay, well, that's pretty cool. That's what the Roman Colosseum looks like. And maybe in here I can see that the Roman Colosseum has some arches. So if I wanted to search for some arches in Lego, maybe I could use that as a keyword. So let's go back to studio and we'll type in the word arch and see what it comes up with. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of bricks in here that actually have arches in them. So I go, okay, well, that's a pretty cool one. I might click on that one, put that into place. I go, all right, well, let's make, we need to make like some columns and we'll make it a little bit taller. So what kind of piece would go underneath this? How many studs are we talking about? Well, maybe just one stud to start with. So I'm gonna go brick and I'm gonna go one by one. And you can see that there's still a few options here. I might go for one of these small ones here and just plonk that onto the grid. Maybe I'll put that on top. All right, and maybe I'll make two, maybe I'll do two there. All right, you can see that the grid automatically is adjusting there. I'll go, okay, well, I'm gonna copy that and paste it underneath. All right, so now I have a pretty decent looking arch. I don't like the color white. It doesn't really look like Colosseum. I might want something a little bit more tanned. So let's go over, let's highlight that. And we'll go over to our color palette and we'll type in the word tan. And let's make that tan. Awesome. So let me see now, how, how does that look like in the Roman Colosseum? Well, you can see that they're kind of layered on top of each other. So maybe I wanna, let's do a one by four brick. Let's put a one by four. So we'll go, instead of one by one, we'll go one by four. And we'll go, all right, and we'll make that tan. And then we'll put that underneath. Okay, awesome. So now, if I wanted to start building this up as a beautiful big Roman Colosseum wall, it doesn't take me long to sort of start copying that, and putting it next to each other, can also put it on top. Are they are they vertical or are they offset? Nope, they're pretty much identical. So I'm gonna line that up like that and I'll just zoom up a little bit and do that. And you can see that I'm starting to build my Roman Colosseum pretty easily and pretty quickly. Now, the Roman Colosseum is actually curved, okay? Which means that that's a little bit trickier to make with Lego. Um, I should have probably thought about this a little bit more when I was doing this example, but let's let's see if we can go with this. So I'm gonna go to, there's a really cool keyword here called hinge. Hinge basically shows the Lego pieces that can sort of rotate a little bit more specifically. And so um, you can see that there's some different options here for, uh, oh, there we go, hinge plate, that's what I'm looking for. So let, let me grab that and grab that and I'm gonna Connect those two together and spin that around. Okay, then how do I move this piece so it's got a little bit of a curve to it? Well, 
in our previous chapter we talked about angling and so we can click on the angle tool and we can just sort of rotate that a little bit like that okay you don't want to rotate too much let's make this tan okay and I'm gonna grab this one here and I'm gonna put that on to my hinge okay and then I'm gonna grab the other one and I'm going to I'm just copying that as well so we can keep using them and I'm gonna grab that now you can see that my Roman Colosseum is starting to take a little bit of a shape here with a little bit of curvature which is really really cool so I'm gonna plonk that there and this one here I'm gonna plonk that in there okay I'm gonna rotate that a little bit as well okay and then I'm gonna grab this and pop that on top and there we go our Roman Colosseum is starting to take shape what, what would I do here, guys? I'd need to get another hinge plate and put that in between, but you get the idea. A Roman Colosseum is starting to take shape. I've got a lot of pieces. I've got 152 pieces in total, but it only took us a minute or two to get this thing happening. Why? We just duplicated. Now, if I went, oh, it would have been good to have a little tile there, maybe like a one by two tile. So I'll go back here and type one by two tile, and I'll just grab that and pop that in there. Maybe make that. Maybe let's make that a darker tan because it will pretend that it had some mold or something on it. All right, now that's fine, but I'm going to have to literally copy and paste that for every single thing. So I highly recommend that when you're building, really think about your model in advance and think about all the different decorations and colors that you would do if you're duplicating pieces. See how long this is taking me now? If I had put that in in the start, I wouldn't be wasting my time right now because I would have had the piece at, for the original one and as I duplicated that tile would appear. Now the other thing that I can do is, uh, oh let me show you a really cool, there's a really nice brick, it's called, um, let's go 1x2 and modified and it is a beautiful brick. If you're looking to actually build buildings that have the, um, that look like bricks, there's one called, it's it's still brick of course, but it's it's a modified brick and it's a beautiful um, design. I, I, I see this all the time when people are building houses. And so when you build on top of each other, you can see that it actually looks really cool. Okay, now that doesn't fit with my Roman Colosseum, but you get the idea. So there you go, a Roman Colosseum that only took a, a minute or two to build. And um, I'd love you to have a go at building something like that and experimenting. Good luck. Now, once you have mastered Studio 2 and you've built a beautiful Lego project and you're ready to export it, you can actually do lifelike renders. I just want to show you one of my Lego Ideas projects. So this is my Lego Ideas account and it's got a bunch of Lego projects that I've made. You can see there's my Star Wars one and I've got a Sesame Street one, Pirates one. That's my NASA spaceship one. I've got a Mars one, Finding Nemo, a bunch of different ones. Roller coaster one's a lot of fun. Kong roller coaster, but this one here is The Martian. It's one of my favorite projects. Um, it's actually one of my favorite movies as well about an astronaut called Mark Watney, who's played by Matt Damon. Matt Damon! Who ends up getting left on Mars when his team escapes Mars due to a massive storm and they're on their way back to Earth and they find out that he's actually still alive even though they thought he was dead, so they have to go back and rescue him. It's a fantastic movie. If I click on that, you can see there's a bunch of images here from this particular Lego project. Now, you might be going, how does that look so real? Because in all honesty, the graphics do look like real Lego. Well, let me show you how I did this. So first thing I'm gonna do is just shrink that and go back to my Lego 2 project. And I'm gonna go and open up that particular project. So I'm gonna go to open recent, there it is, the Martian. You can see that there's 749 parts. So not that many parts for this particular project. Uh, so this project took me, or probably took one of my weekends, or at least most of one of my weekends. And you can see that, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of pieces, but I've actually been quite meticulous with the detail on this project. So what I mean by that is that I, um, I didn't want to just create a, a boring, you know, rover with flat shapes. I wanted to actually have a lot of intricate details. So I've got a lot of pipes and wiring and this this one here is actually a utensil of a paint roller okay so if i just move that so you can see that a bit clearer that's just a paint roller that the minifigures hold but i thought that looked really cool to use as a uh, sort of like a wiring system um, 
for the oxygenator, which is actually supplying our astronaut here, Mark Watney, with oxygen as he drives around on the planet Mars. So a couple of things. If I wanted to make this a real life render, which means a real life image to make it look ultra realistic, then once I've finished my model and I'm happy with it, I can set the angle that I, I want. So I can, I go, okay, that, that looks like a cool angle. Let's, let's make this angle into a, a photo. So I go up to this little icon here, it says render, and I click on render, right? Straight away, you can notice that there's a bit of a background. It's just a blue background. I can change that to any color I want. I can make it black. I could make it sort of like a, a Mars sort of reddish browny kind of color if I wanted to. If I just pressed render down here, render, then I would get this color in the background and that would be my color for life. Very hard to remove that, but I also have the option of making it transparent. And that basically means that when I render this image, all the background is going to be see-through and I can then superimpose this image onto any other image I want. So if I had a Mars picture of the surface of Mars, I could then render this image and put it on top of my Mars image. And that's exactly what I did for these images here. So this is just an image that I rendered from Studio 2 and I superimposed it onto the background of another Mars image. And actually, if I scroll forwards a little bit, and I'm just gonna to go to my last image, you can actually see what I did. So this was my image that I rendered from Studio 2, and I plonked it on top of the actual Martian image. So that was the rover from the Martian movie, and I just plonked that image on top of this image, so you can see that it's got a nice contrast between the actual original movie image and my Studio 2 rendered image. And I did the same down here, as well. So you can see this is an image from the actual movie and there's the astronaut Mark Watney down here and then I put my Lego version next to it so you get a, a really good comparison between the two. So how do you actually render this image? Well once you've selected the image and you can zoom in and out, okay, you can just use the right click and spin it around and once you're happy with it you can then choose the resolution. Now there's lots of different resolutions you can choose from. You don't have to know what all of these mean, but this is really important in the brackets here where it says four by three or 16 by nine. Four by three is like more of a squarish type image. It's not completely square, of course. Square would be one to one, but it is kind of like a, um, an old school TV. Um, but most images now that I render are at 16 by nine ratio, which is your typical cinema sort of ratio. Cinema is actually a bit wider than that, but that's your standard like normal uh, flat screen TV. If you're watching a Blu-ray, it's probably in the 16 by nine ratio. Okay, and I can also use this portrait mode as well if I wanted this sort of longer aspect ratio as well. So once you've chosen your aspect and then you've chosen your resolution, now keep in mind, if you did this bottom one, which is the highest resolution, right? Basically like a 4K resolution, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take hours to render. So unless you've got a really fast computer, I don't recommend that you choose the really super high resolutions. You might wanna start by just experimenting with a standard high definition resolution around here, because it's still probably gonna take your computer around half an hour just to do this one. One of my computers is a, a high-end Acer Predator computer, which is really high spec and has a really powerful graphics card, lots and lots of RAM, and it still takes about 30 to 40 minutes to render in 4K per image. Okay, just to put that into perspective. So once you've done that, you've chosen your resolution, you've chosen your background, it could be a color or it could be transparent. If it's transparent, make sure you choose this format, PNG, okay, PNG, because JPEGs don't make transparent images, only the PNG format. And then I hit render, okay, It'll say, where do you want to save this to? And I can save it to my desktop, whatever, call it something, the Martian image, whatever. And then when you press save, it will render that image. And let me just do a low res one for now, just so I can show you this. Okay, so I'm gonna go render, and we'll just call this test, and we'll save this to the desktop, boom. And have a look at how this works. So it actually has a screen, it's a black screen, and it will render each square of the screen until it's finished. So this is gonna be a little bit faster because it's at a super low resolution. I'm not gonna wait for this whole thing. Um, you can see that progress is 
currently only 1%, and that's in a super low res, and I'm still waiting for this to appear, but you should see some squares start to appear on the screen around here. There we go. It's my first square. Okay, and this is going to go through and render one square at a time. And this is low res, so the higher the res, the smaller these squares are. So if it was 4K, it would be tiny little squares, and it would take, again, a really, really long time to render. Okay, so I'm going to stop this render because otherwise it's going to take forever. But that is how you render. And once you've rendered, you'll have super lifelike images ready to go, and you can submit that for LEGO ideas. You can put them into your projects. You can do whatever you want with them. And again, this is what it should end up looking like when you've finished. Beautiful high-res images. That little NASA symbol I stuck on there. Um, I just used pages to stick that in there. But um, that uh, American flag was actually already a LEGO brick. So it's all ready to go. Rock and roll. Good luck with your rendering. Now I want to talk about creating submodels. So submodels are basically models within your main model. This main model has 747 um, total parts, as you can see down the bottom. I've deleted a couple. And I want to highlight this crane at the back here, and I want to make this crane its own individual submodel. So I can either select them manually like I have now. Sometimes it's easy just to select one piece that they're all connected to. So this is a turntable at the bottom. So in real life, this is what the piece looks like. It looks like that. And there's the base piece that goes underneath it. And it just clicks on top like that. And in real life, you can actually spin turntables around. You've probably seen that before. There's a lot, a lot of Lego models out there with turntables. So if I just select the, the turntable piece here, and then I go to spin it, it will automatically select all of the pieces above that are connected to it. Okay, so now I can create a submodel by right clicking, going down to submodel, and pressing create. Now, this I'm going to call this crane. Okay, so now when I select it, it, instead of having to highlight it each time, I know that this piece is already ready to go. I can still click on all of these individually like I normally would, but as soon as I click on the crane, it's selected. That means that I can now click on it and spin this crane around really simple really easily like this and go okay great i want that angle i'm going to render a photo of this angle or, or whatever you're trying to do for for your renders the issue is if you've created a submodel and then you want to go and edit it so if i wanted to change the color of this round piece here i can't do that because it's a submodel so to do that you just release it i go submodel i go release and then they're all released again and now i can click on that specific piece change the color and off I go again. Okay, so some models are really, really handy. I use them all the time, especially in my big projects, and uh, you, you might need to use them in your project as well. All right, good luck with that. All right, so once you have finished your Lego project and you have gone and rendered all of your images and saved them somewhere, I've put all my Martian images into this folder called Finish the Martian Images. And you might go, okay, well, I want to put this into my school project now. So you might be using Pages or Keynote or PowerPoint or whatever you're using. I've just created a very simple, quick project called Steve's The Martian Lego Project. And I go, okay, I just want to get my finished rendered image in there. And so I can just click on that and drag it in like that. And then I've got my images ready to go. You can create new slides and just add in all your images and then submit them as part of your assignment. And this is a really cool way of building amazing 3D images, Lego images that you can put into your school project to explain concepts and to have a lot of fun in the process. So good luck with it all. Hope you build something amazing for your school project. Hope you can come up with something that blows all your parents and guardians and teachers and students away and have fun in the process guys good luck bye bye